right. Well, hello, everyone. Um, I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, today, we're going to be going over the, the 2018 State Water Efficiency and Enhancement Program. This is a technical assistance uh, training that we're going over to help folks uh, understand what is required in order to apply for the SWEEP program. Uh, just a couple of, uh, of orders of information. Um, this program is being administered by both the Office of Environmental Farming and Innovation as well as the Office of Grants Administration. So we work together on administering this program. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and we are planning on hosting this onto the CDFA website in the same location which you found the link for the uh, webinar for all the folks that are online. And then uh, we are going to be accepting questions, but we'll be taking those questions at the end of the webinar uh, for anyone that's online. Uh, please just type in your question in the, in the question box in the side column, and we will get to those uh, at the end. For folks that are here in the audience today, uh, if you have any question, uh, just you raise your hand and let, let me know. I can uh, try and answer them. I might uh, be getting to that in a future slide, in which case I will let you know that. Um, but uh, And then a couple of more orders of information. The bathrooms are out the door, and to my left, um, you can find them pretty easy. And then also there's a sign-in sheet at the front, uh, so if you didn't get a chance to sign in, uh, please do so uh, on your way out. Uh, there's also packets of information that we have here for folks that are, that are here um, today. Uh, so with that, all right, a little bit about the program. Uh, SWEEP is a competitive grant application uh, process. It's administered by the California Department of Food and Agriculture. We are receiving funding through Proposition 68, uh, which is uh, the purpose is to uh, provide financial incentives for California agricultural operations to invest in irrigation systems that save water as well as reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, so you need to do both of those things. One thing I would like to note is this is a new funding source for us. Uh, there are slightly different requirements as opposed to when we were previously funded by the California Climate Investment Programs. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind. This is Proposition 68 funding. All right. Um, the funding duration. Uh, SWEEP funding was authorized by the Budget Act of 2018, in um, which we received $20 million. Uh, and we're planning on running two different solicitations for this $20 million. Uh, project grant amounts are not to exceed $100,000 per project. And then uh, the project duration is going to be 18 months. This is an extension as to has it, how it has been in the past. Uh, historically, it's been 12 months, but we, we extended it out uh, in order to hopefully accommodate uh, folks um, with implementing these projects in a timely manner. Uh, the proposed project dates right now are September 2019 through March 2021. Uh, that's when your March 2021 is when your project is going to be is going to be required to be working fully functional. Okay, uh, so this is our solicitation timeline. Uh, we re released the request for grant application, which is called the RGA, on December 28th of 2018. You can find the link to that on our SWEEP webpage. Um, the grant applications are due uh, on March 8th of 2019, so we have a 10-week application period. This is an extension as to how it has been in the past as well. Um, so I would encourage folks to start looking into that if you're interested in applying for the program. Uh, we are anticipating announcing awards for funding in June of 2019, and then the project start dates are September of 2019. Uh, like I said prior, uh, those are subject to change uh, depending, but, but that should be there, our projected dates at this time. I would also encourage you guys to visit the uh, SWEEP webpage to find out more information about any of these things and keep up to date on any timeline changes. Okay, so the application period. Uh, I'm going to go over the application as a whole, an overview of it, um, to hopefully help inform folks about this overall process and what's required, what kind of information they need to gather before they even start the application, and uh, how some of these uh, quantification tools work. Okay, um, so the Sweep web website has a bunch of resources on it uh, that are required to be filled out in order to uh, submit the application. Uh, there's, of course, the budget, um, which is going to be broken down. 
as to what exactly you're planning on putting into your project. The uh, greenhouse gas calculator, the irrigation water savings assessment tool. Uh, we have some videos that are on the website uh, that are of previously awarded projects. They might find they might be useful for folks. I, I am planning on showing you guys one of those at the very end of this presentation, um, just to show you the kind of projects we've funded in the past. Uh, there's also a link to the previously awarded projects, uh, so you can also get some ideas about projects that have been awarded in the past and their um, their project, their overview of their project. Uh, we have the frequently asked questions on the website, uh, so that that might be a good place to start if you have a question that uh, isn't isn't clear. Um, you can look into the FAQs and see if if there's an answer to that question uh, on there. We also do. Uh, except if, if, there are, if the question is not on the FAQ, you can submit an email to us, uh, in which case we'll review that question and see if it's necessary to add to the FAQ. We do add uh, to the FAQ on a fairly regular basis, uh, so that, that should be up to date and we'll put a date on that when we, when we do that. Um, there's also technical assistance providers. Uh, we have contracted with, a third, with various third parties and nonprofits throughout the state in order to help provide assistance for individuals who are looking to apply for the program. Uh, they provide one-on-one -on -one assistance as well as, uh, in some cases, put on workshops. Uh, and there's a, a list of all of those available on the SWEEP webpage. I'll go into that a bit further as well. And then uh, we are planning on embedding this video of this technical workshop into our SWEEP webpage. So that resource is not available as of yet, but it will be uh, once we get everything figured out and and ready to go. So I'm going to launch the Sweep web page and just uh, show you what it looks like, give you the overview. So um, this is the State Water Efficiency and Enhancement Program web page. Uh, if you Google CDFA and Sweep, S-W-E-E-P, uh, this will be what you find. Um, you can also just go to the CDFA web page and, and uh, look for it. It's in the Office of Environmental Farming and Innovation, and the subprogram is, is Sweep. So, um, this is a list of our solicitation documents, so you can click here to apply. This is going to launch to the uh, web portal, which I will be showing in more detail later on through the presentation. Uh, this is a link to the request for grant applications. This is sort of our mother document that uh, goes over all of the necessary requirements and um, you know, is the overview of what's necessary for the to apply for the SWEEP program. It is included in your packets if you have shown up here. Uh, it, it, that's a document that's in there. Uh, the request, uh, frequently asked questions. Uh, this is all the frequently asked questions that I went over, so you can, uh, that will be updated from time to time, but that's a good resource to look over. Again, it's also included in your packet. We do have flyers. Uh, this is more for the solicitation. This is for any English, Spanish, Portuguese, Punjabi, and Hmong. Um, we're trying to out to reach uh, various demographics. Uh, again, this is the timeline. Uh, so this is where you would look in order to uh, keep up to date on what's necessary. Uh, this is where the website uh, workshop is going to be located. The presentation I'm giving now is going to be embedded here, but this is where you would log in and or register for additional um, webinars that are coming up. So right now we're doing the first one in Sacramento. Tomorrow we'll be down in Fresno, and then on the 15th uh, we'll be in Doris. Um, so if you're in any of those areas, uh, feel free to come, physically be there, or you can register for the web webinar and, and uh, see it again. Um, below, this is the list of technical assistance providers. Uh, I'm going to go into this in a little bit more detail in a minute, but uh, we do have 27 different uh, technical assistance providers located throughout the state uh, that we've contracted with in order to assist folks in the application process. Um, it's a very valuable resource, so if you're a first-time applicant and you're struggling a little bit, I would uh, certainly encourage you to, to look into the list of technical assistance providers, um, see which one uh, might be uh, closest in your area and reach out and contact them or see if they're, they're posting any workshops uh, on, on that. Um, on the resources side, there's the budget worksheet, the sweep irrigation water savings assessment tool, the greenhouse gas calculator, Greenhouse Gas Quantification Methodology. This is the methodology under, underlying the calculator tool. Uh, and then a few other resources that uh, you might need throughout the application. These are the sweet videos, previously awarded videos that I was referencing before. Uh, a good resource if you're just getting started 
And then uh, again, this recipient info is uh, previously awarded round of grants that uh, you might find some inspiration or see the projects that we have funded in the past and see if uh, that was something you were proposing it might be a good avenue to explore. Okay, uh, the technical assistance providers. I did go over this a little bit, but uh, I'll reiterate. Uh, we have 27 uh, currently technical assistance providers that are located throughout the state uh, from north to south uh, in the coast and the coast and back areas. Um, we are adding seven more. Uh, they'll be available soon, but we're still in the process of getting those uh, coordinated. And then uh, they are contracted to provide one-on-one -on -one application assistance to individuals. Uh, but some of these folks will also be conducting uh, workshops similar to what I'm doing right now uh, for an audience. Uh, again, look at that sweep webpage. Uh, you will see um, the list of, of providers that are available and uh, if they're putting on any workshops. We're going to be updating that uh, quite often to make sure it's most up to date when we receive any additional workshop information. Okay, um, so a little bit about eligibility. Uh, who is eligible to apply for a sweep grant? Um, California farmers, ranchers, and federal and California recognized Native American tribes are eligible to apply for this program. Um, the irrigation projects must be on California agricultural lands. So it has to be in California agricultural operations. Um, Nevada would not be available or any other state. Uh, for the purpose of this program, an agricultural operation is defined as a row, vineyard, field, and tree crop, commercial nursery, nursery stock production, and greenhouse op operation producing food crops or flowers is defined by the Food and Agricultural Code 77911. Uh, you can look that up online if you need more information about that. Uh, an agricultural operation uh, cannot receive a total cumulative sweep award amount of more than $600,000. Uh, this is for folks that are reapplying that have previously received funds from the SWEEP program. Uh, so if you received that cap, uh, you are not eligible to uh, apply for any, any, more, any more of these applications, any more of these grant funds. Um, there's not a lot of them out there, but they do exist, so keep that in mind. Um, agricultural operations, they can't build upon any sort of previously funded SWEEP project that's directly affecting the same assessor's parcel number. So what that means is that if you received a sweep grant in the past and you uh, are interested in receiving another one, we will not fund a project that is on the same APN or affecting that same APN um, on the previously awarded project. Applicants, of course, need to be 18 years uh, old or older. Um, and then, of course, projects need to uh, save water as well as reduce greenhouse gases. And I'll go on into a little bit more about uh, the methodology that's around that and how you would go about doing that, uh, how you go about quantifying that through the calculator tools. So uh, some of the exclusions. Um, SWEEP does not provide funding to academic universities for research or research institutions uh, as well as or, or the uh, state governmental organizations. So they're not eligible to receive funding, um, and sweep cannot uh, sweep funding cannot be combined with NRCS equipped funds for the same components. Uh, a little bit to, to go a little bit more in depth, uh, K through 12 K through 12 school districts are eligible to receive sweep funding, as well as um, community gardens or things of that nature, as long as they're able to use the quantification methodology that we have uh, built in. Um, another exclusion uh, as part of that ag code is uh, cannabis is not uh, is currently excluded from re receiving any sort of uh, sweep grant. Okay, um, priority funding. Uh, this is the sort of prioritization that um, the legislation has um, put forward for us. Um, applicants with a minimum technical reviewer score of 30 will receive funding, will receive a funding priority if 
Uh, one, they benefit a severely disadvantaged community. Uh, I'm going to go into that a little bit more, what exactly a severely disadvantaged community is. Uh, and also, a uh, socially disadvantaged farmer, which is defined by the Farm Equity Act of 2017. A socially disadvantaged group means a group whose members have been subjugated to racial, ethnic, or gender prejudices because of their identity as a member, as members of a group without regards to their individual qu uh, qualities. The Farmer Equity Act of 2017 identifies the following in social, socially disadvantaged groups, African Americans, Native Indians, Alaskan Natives, Hispanics, Asian Americans, and Native Hawaiians and Pacific Islanders. Now that's not to say that you're not eligible if, if you don't fall into one of those socially disadvantaged farming groups. Um, just, just be aware that that is a funding priority. Um, okay, uh, so this is the socially advantaged, uh, disadvantaged community tool. I'm going to launch it uh, on the web browser in a moment. But uh, socially disadvantaged communities is defined as a community whose annual household, household income is below 60% of the statewide average. Now that's based on your census tract. We're not looking for W-2s or anything of that nature in order to uh, receive this additional consideration. Um, this is uh, a, there's a mapping tool which I'm going to go into. Um, Okay, so within this mapping tool, um, there is both this disadvantaged community and severely disadvantaged community layer. Uh, we're looking for severely disadvantaged community, which is this orange layer. The disadvantaged community layer is the purple layer. So just keep that in mind. Look at the color. Um, we're looking for the orange layer when we're referencing severely disadvantaged communities. Uh, you can, you know, type in your location and address, zoom in on uh, any sort of site and see where these uh, socially disadvantaged communities uh, reside. So they're located up and down throughout the state uh, in ag zones as well. Okay, um, and also I'd like to mention that this um, website is embedded in the application, so when you get to this question in the application, uh, you will be able to directly link to this um, through the process. It'll be really straightforward when you get to that, that point. Okay, uh, how about we get into uh, some of the project types. So SWEEP has been fortunate to fund uh, a variety of project uh, types, um, and it was developed at CDFA in 2014. It's a flexible grant program that has two environmental objectives, water savings and greenhouse gas emission reductions for irrigation systems on California farms. So far we have had six rounds of funding to date uh, with money coming from the Greenhouse Gas Reduction Fund. This is a different funding source, I might add. Um, uh, applicants apply for a grant on a holistic project that incorporate multiple components in order to achieve both the required water savings and greenhouse gas reductions. The project list types, the project type lists here have been included in the program guidelines as components for which water savings and greenhouse gas reductions can be conserved or can be estimated through the tools that were developed uh, for the program. In order to achieve water conservation, farmers often apply for sensors that help them know when the crop needs water. They also can apply for micro-irrigation systems or other irrigation systems that result in water saving, savings. Greenhouse gas reductions are accomplished through pump efficiency improvements, fuel conversions um, to lower emitting fuel types, so converting from electric to diesel is one example of a um, favorable uh, greenhouse gas reduction methodology. Uh, also, the installation of renewable energies, such as solar, uh, the use of variable frequency drives, uh, or simply reducing the overall pumping uh, just due to irrigation scheduling improvements. Um, I'll go into the, the greenhouse gas tool a little bit later. So we also have a category. Um, so within this, we have the, uh, the various categories, uh, improving irrigation water management, soil, weather, and plant sensors, uh, micro-irrigation, improved energy efficiency, that's the pump replacement or retrofit, fuel conversions, CFDs, low pressure systems, um, the reduction of pumping, 
and then other projects that combine water savings and greenhouse gas uh, reductions. Um, this is sort of uh, for the innovative projects that do not fit uh, into the project type categories listed under water conservation and greenhouse gas emissions. But I do want to make sure it's clear that uh, you still need to use the uh, water savings calculator and the greenhouse gas quantification methodology in order to um, quantify the differences of the, the savings that you're going to be achieving uh, through this type of project. Okay, uh, program requirements. So only submit one uh, application using the operation's legal business name and unique, unique tax identification number. If you're submitting as a sole proprietor, use the last four digits of the individual social security number. What that essentially means is there's one application per applicant um, and uh, you're gonna either use, if you're a legal business, you can use that unique tax ID identification number uh, if you aren't a uh, legal business, uh, the last four digits of your social security number will be sufficient for our needs. Um, you cannot build upon any previously funded sweep project affecting the same assessor's parcel number. So I know I'm reiterating this, but I want to make sure that that's clear. Um, you, you, that's not an allowable um, process. You must include flow meters uh, or demonstrate that the actual water will be measured with existing flow meters or by the water supplier. So we need to make sure that uh, the water use is quantified post-project. Okay, uh, more program requirements. You must use the sweep irrigation water savings as assessment tool to estimate the water savings. And you also need to use the Air Resources Board greenhouse gas calculator tool to estimate the greenhouse gas reductions. Uh, one way of looking at the greenhouse gas tool is, is energy uh, savings. So if you're saving energy, you're reducing the greenhouse gas load. Um, sweet greenhouse gas calculator tool is intended to assist applicants in determining the greenhouse gas uh, reductions from estimating on-farm energy savings as a result of the project implementation. Uh, to complete these, these tools, applicants must attach pump efficiency tests for existing irrigation pumps impacted by the project and provide uh, additional supporting documents uh, such as the baseline energy records and the, as well as the water savings calculator. All those components are going to be plugged into this uh, greenhouse gas calculator. I'm going to go into that uh, in more detail when it comes to it. Um, but uh, just one thing to keep in mind, we are now requiring that you have 12 months of energy records. Um, so. Uh, if your ag well is off uh, during winter, you can still submit a record that says you have no bill, but we need that 12, 12 month time frame. If you're using uh, diesel, uh, you're going to want to submit your fuel receipts when you're filling up uh, your, your fuel tanks. And the same is true for natural gas as well, the, the fuel receipts. Okay. Um, some of the program restrictions, uh, sweep grant funds cannot be used to expand existing agricultural operations. So that's adding additional new acreage um, that can't be converted to farmland. So yeah, no expanding of that through sweep dollars. Um, installing new groundwater wells or increasing the well depth. Uh, we do not fund any, any sort of uh, drilling or anything of that nature and it wouldn't be accepted if it was included as a part of the matching funds for one of the projects. Um, we aren't um, funding uh, testing of experimental technology or, the, or performing any kind of research. This is uh, for known technologies that have been proven to uh, achieve greenhouse gas and water savings. Um, so, so no research as part of our funding. Uh, we do not pay for the engineering costs associated with the project design and the development or planning. So we won't pay for anything that was part of, of your planning process, uh, retroactively pay for, for you, if you're building a solar system and you need to pay the vendor in order to create one of those quotes, anything of that nature, we won't reimburse you for that. Um, we also don't allow for leased weather, soil, and irrigation water-based sensors uh, for irrigation technology. Now, we, we do allow for the purchasing of those pieces of equipment, um, but not the leasing of those types of equipment. There are vendors um, that, that absolutely will sell you those pieces of equipment. Um, so, 
Uh, and we also do not uh, pay for the purchase of tools and equipment with a useful life of less than two years. Each project is expected uh, to have a life of a project of 10 years. Um, so anything that, that won't last the duration of that, that project is not something we're going to be paying for. Okay, um, so this is an overview of the overall solicitation process and how it works. So right now um, we are in the grant, uh, we're open open submission for the, the grants. Uh, once those close, uh, they're submitted, we're going to go through what's called administrative review. That's where we review these uh, projects for their completeness and disqualify projects that are missing uh, important attachments such as the greenhouse gas calculator or water savings tools. Um, um, or are requesting greater than $100,000, which is our cap. Um, so please keep that in mind. Don't request more than the overall, the maximum amount, because you will be disqualified. Um, once we've gone through the administrative review and reviewed it for completeness, we send it off to a third-party technical reviewer. Now, these are folks from the UC uh, CSU systems, often professors that are experts in irrigation technology, uh, water use efficiency, greenhouse gas efficiencies. Um, so we send it off uh, for technical review, in which case they overview it uh, into their the merit and feasibility of the programs, uh, and as well as their um, you know their water savings, their greenhouse gas savings, and their additional considerations. I'm going to go into a slide later on, which is uh, an overview of what the technical reviewer is reviewing. Um, so keep those things in mind when you're thinking about any kind of application, uh, the, the types of scoring that, that are, revolve around it. Okay, so unsuccessful applicants uh, will be notified that they're unsuc unsuccessful and they'll be provided feedback. So feedback can be useful for if you wish to apply the following round or coming round. You can see what, uh, what you might have done wrong, what was unfavorable, um, and so on and so forth. And then successful applicants will be notified that they've been selected to receive an award. Uh, and that's when we move through the grant agreement uh, initiation process. It's a little bit, it's considerably more complicated than, than this graphic is, is showing. Um, you know, there's pre-project consultations and, and overviews. Um, but uh, if you get to that step, congratulations, it's, it's exciting. Okay, um, the application attachments. So there are several key attachments that are required for the application. Uh, we need project design. We need the completed budget worksheet, which has a uh, piece of equipment spelled out clearly uh, for what exactly you're looking to apply for, what these costs are, the quantity, et cetera. Uh, if you're installing a solar system, we want to have a solar system quote. Um, and uh, we need the completed uh, sweep irrigation water savings assessment, assessment tool and the ARB greenhouse gas calculator tool. Uh, I want to make sure that when you fill out this tool, you remember to save it before you upload it. I think we've had cases where you know, people have completed the tools and then uploaded it, uh, but through that process, we just received more or less a blank calculator. Uh, so a step that I would just like to stress is when you get to that stage, make sure that your your calculator is the most up-to-date and completed saved version of it. Um, we're looking for 12 consecutive months of baseline greenhouse gas emission documentation for any pumps that are impacted by this project. Uh, some, some operations have multiple pumps, multiple meters. We would want all of that information uh, clearly laid out uh, as to you know where they go. Um, It'll help us when we're reviewing the project. It'll help the technical reviewer when they're reviewing the project. Uh, it's certainly uh, a requirement. And then um, pump efficiency test and the pump specification documents, which are required by the ARB quantification methodology. Um, you're going to want to include the most recent pump test that you have um, for this for the documentation. Now, we, we do, do accept additional documentations to be submitted in this application. So if you have a third-party vendor who's um, making a design or um, various, various other pieces of documentation that might not fill the criteria that are listed here, um, you can attach that. It always can help support your narrative. 
uh, and I would I would certainly encourage folks to uh, add additional information. This is this is what is required. Okay, uh, so project design. Project design must include the following as applicable. We need a labeled accessory parcel number. Um, that's your APN number. We need a detailed schematic of the location of proposed or improved infrastructure and technology, including, including irrigation piping, reservoirs, pumps, as well as sensors. Um, pertinent, pertinent agronomic information, such as the crop, and the water distribution uniformity value is the uh, favorable information to include. And then a real, more or less, it's a holistic project overview using aerial image, imagery software. So uh, I do have an example of one I created uh, for this presentation. Um, I used, oh, I think I used Google Earth uh, and took a screenshot of it and then used PowerPoint to, to put various details on it. So uh, all the software that you might require is Pretty readily available on any any computer. Um, you, you don't need to download, you know, ArcGIS or anything too fancy just to apply. So this is just an example of of a field. This is my proposed project uh, in which I'm going to be um, putting a pipe that's replacing a ditch uh, for water conveyance. Uh, I'm going to be putting in uh, two soil moisture stations, and those are the proposed locations. Uh, and then I'm putting in solar, uh, evapotranspiration, a new electric pump, variable frequency drive, as well as a flow meter in that pumping station. That's what that square box is, is, is uh, indicating. I have on this that my APN is listed there. Uh, the whole parcel number, is, a whole parcel acreage is 160 acres, at least proposed. And then I'm proposing that I'm doing this project in this blue area, which is the 60 acres of corn is my proposal. Um, so that's just an, a, a basic example of, of the uh, project design. Okay, budget worksheet. So the budget worksheet for folks who are familiar with the SWEET program has changed a little bit. Uh, we hope that this is a, a change for the better and it helps um, really compartmentalize where these uh, particular components are going uh, within the, the budget. Um, but items are the items are itemized, sorry, items, all allowable costs uh, related to the project are in categories. There's supplies, equipment, labor, and other. Um, supplies are anything that are under $5,000 per unit, uh, and then equipment is anything beyond that. Uh, labor, I think, is, is self-explanatory that that is labor. Um, this must be consistent with the project design. So if your project design says you have two soil moisture sensors or stations, it should also reflect that that is the case within the, uh, the budget. These are things that we review. Um, we encourage the use of the uh, NRCS equip payment schedule as a guide to the extent feasible to determine what is a reasonable cost for these pieces of equipment. Um, and then uh, see the request for grant applications for the list of allowable and unallowable expenses. We have gone over some of these unallowable expenses already, um, but uh, keep in mind that design is something you wouldn't want to incorporate in the budget. This is a uh, screenshot of it, of what it looks like. Actually, I'm going to open it up. Um, I think it will be a little more. Okay, so um, some of the things we've changed here is we now have a README tab, uh, which I hope is help, helpful and help guide people as to uh, what exactly needs to go into the budget. Keep in mind that labor cannot exceed 25% of the total grant that's requested. So if you're requesting $100, you can't have labor more than $25, um, it, and so on and so forth, you know, scale to, to what is required for your operation. Um, this is something we do review. Um, we also uh, want cost share to be incorporated into this budget. Uh, that, that's if you are uh, putting some funds into the game um, for this. So, of course, there's the app, there's some basic information, the organization, the application ID number. This is something that's found on the submission portal. You're, gonna, you're going to get this number and you'll put it in there and save it uh, accordingly. So we have these supplies. Um, you, this is where you put the description, the quantity, and the subtotal of each of these pieces of equipment. Um, 
and then you're going to find if it goes into the irrigation system improvements, irrigation water management. So um, irrigation system and improvements is going to be uh, things like uh, drip systems, micro sprinklers, things like that. Irrigation water management is going to be things like your soil moisture sensors, your ET sensors. Um, pump and energy improvements, that's your variable frequency drive, uh, et cetera, retrofitting, um, solar and renewables, and then other management practices. Uh, these are for the things that don't quite fit within uh, these defined categories. Now there's the supplies category and then there's the equipment category. So if, if I'm proposing installing a $6,000 pump, I'm going to put that in the equipment category in the pump and energy improvements section. Um, if this category isn't long enough, say I have a lot of supplies uh, I'm looking to put in, you can uh, simply just add a new column and it does work accordingly. The functions are built in to, to, to do that. Um, at the top, you'll see your total grant requested, the cost share that you have, and then the total project cost. Uh, there's a cost share section too. right here, cost shares in the bottom. Um, so this is if you're if you're going to putting some skin into the game and you want to pay for uh, something something else beyond beyond the project. Um, uh, the labor function is, is it's kind of neat. It does tell you if you are requesting more money than 25 percent. It shows it's red and says you're you're doing something wrong. So hopefully uh, that will uh, make people realize that that's the incorrect way to fill out this form and also. Um, not submit an application and be disqualified accordingly because we will not allow projects to move forward if they're requesting more than 25% in labor. Okay, okay. Um, I'll just go to the irrigation savings. Uh, this is the irrigation water savings assessment tool. Uh, we have a README tab on this as well. Um, this is going to go over the information that you need to acquire. This is before and after tabs and um, various things in here. But uh, I'll show you the, the calculator tool. So within this, I put in my your applicant ID number. That's the what was found in the application itself, the applicant field or ranch name, the date, and the impacted acreage. These are all key pieces of information that need to be um, Put in there and so now I'm on the before tab so we're just going to say that I'm in baseline township and range uh, this is a more or less a lat long uh, but it defines where you are within the map of California um, and there's a tool within the instructions tab that helps you figure out what your baseline township and range is so it's not it's not terribly difficult to do you fill in that correctly and then I will say I am in a clay soil and I'm growing alfalfa Right now, I have surface irrigation. It's under optimal conditions. I am, I like to make sure everything is, is good distribution, uniformity, tailwater recovery, et cetera. Um, but in the, in the after scenario, let's say I'm interested in doing a crop conversion. We see more and more of these over the years. I still need to select that I am in the, oh, what was my soil? Clay. Okay. Clay soil. So it doesn't automatically update that from, from section to section. Keep that in mind. Um, that is an error and we would need to be corrected. And I am changing to almonds, changing a crop type. Uh, same baseline township and range. Those those will need to be reflected as well. So if I change that in the, in the before tab, I need to change that in the after tab. That they're independent of each other. Um, and I am proposing that I install drip irrigation and I'm placing surface irrigation. Uh, now this is the uh, irrigation water management system, this section right here. This is the proposed change that, I, that I'm looking to do. So uh, let's say before when I was growing alfalfa, I had a flow meter and an ET sensor out there. Um, but part of my new proposal is I want to include a soil moisture gauge. Now that's defined as an irrigation water management system level three. You have all three of those components. Um, but the, the change that you are incorporating in this project is only a change by one. I hope that makes sense. So I would increase that irrigation water management to one. Sometimes an error pops up, but uh, just disregard that. Um, and 
we will go to our estimated water savings. Through, so through that crop conversion and changing from um, sprinkler or from flood irrigation to drip using the same soil type, same baseline township and range, and as well as including that soil moisture gauge uh, and increasing my irrigation water management by one level to level three, uh, I am projected to save an annual estimated water savings of 26 uh, acre inches per acre, um, and that's my percent savings. This is information that you're going to be putting into the application. Um, so when I'm done with this, I would save it um, and upload it, but I'd also need to fill these, these columns into the application itself. Um, Background information and assumptions. This is, uh, if you have any questions about how the calculator works, you, you want to look into a little bit more detail, I would certainly encourage folks to, to look into that. Um, it's it's uh, worth worth the, uh, the time, the read. Okay. Again, that, this uh, calculator tool is on our website. Um, I would, if you're interested in applying for SWEEP, I would, I would look at it before before I even start an application and get a sense about how it works. So the greenhouse gas type calculator tool and supporting information. Uh, so the applicant must include a completed copy of the greenhouse gas calculator tool, save after you've completed it, uh, an explanation of the inputs that are used in the calculator, um, greenhouse gas supporting documentations, pump tests, pump specifications, energy records, uh, you're going to want to have actual baseline greenhouse gas emission values that are provided uh, on an applicant must must uh, have supporting documentation affiliated with that. Uh, so it's your farm energy records. You can get your SMUD bills, your PG&E bills, SoCal Edison electric bills, your um, your uh, fill in, your tank fill um, bills, uh, things of that nature uh, for the for the calendar or for the year for 12 months. Um, so you must cover at least 12 months from the peak or from prior peak irrigation growing season. And you also need to include the pump efficiency test and information on the pump motor spe specifications. So this is a pump efficiency test. If you go to a, a pump guide, they might be able to provide this for you. Uh, I know that certain utilities will also provide this for you. Um, uh, if you're within the application time frame, it might be wise to um, try and get this quickly in order to apply for this grant. Um, within it, it has this section, the overall pump efficiency. So within this document, what it's proposing is that there's going to be a retrofit. So the overall, right now we had a 100 horsepower pump uh, that was overall pump efficiency at 57%. After the retrofit, it's going to be 67%. So that's an increase. Um, you'll see other pieces of information that uh, might be useful in filling out this calculator tool, which I'll show you in a moment, um, but, but those are the, the two key pieces of information that I want to um, point out. There's also this dis discharge pressure, which is something that it asks for. Um, okay. okay, so this is just a um, preview of the uh, Air Resources Board Greenhouse Gas Emissions Reductions Calculator. Uh, we have worked with our partners at the Air Resources Board in order to develop this tool, um, and uh, let me let me let me go into it. Okay, again, there's a README tab, very useful and actually it's very important. Um, you need to fill out your project name, contact information, etc. But what's really important here is that you have the total irrigated project acres on there. If you don't have that, it's not going to calculate it. Uh, properly, you'll you'll get an error at the tail end. Uh, this is because uh, our quantification methodology uh, is on a per acre basis, with whether or not you're saving, how much water you're saving per acre, and how much greenhouse gas savings you are saving per acre, not for the the total acreage of the farm. Um, and then the uh, requested fund amount is how much money you're requesting. Um, okay. Input. So. Field ranch name pump. So this is where I would put. Uh, let's say I have 10,000 uh, kilowatt. I am using electricity. 10,000 electricity. So that's 10,000 kilowatt hours over the year. Uh, I would basically use those energy bills that I have, add them together, and then put that information in here. Um, 
there's an emission factor, that, emission factor that is part of this, um, based on a lot of research and information that ARB and other folks have created in order to do this. Then I'm going to be putting in my, so there's a pre-project column and a post-project column. So if I have a um, 100 horsepower pump, and I'm, let's just say I'm going to keep 100 horsepower pump. Um, this is operational hours if you know it for the calendar year. Uh, not necessary to fill that out if you don't know it. Um, but in my example, I believe it was 57% overall home efficiency, 67%. That's how I'd fill that out. This is my post project. Once I have my pump retrofit installed, how it's going to work. Um, now, these pumping depth, depth, discharge pressure, and friction loss, now these are in feet. Uh, oftentimes, uh, pump efficiency tests will be reported in PSI, pounds per square inch. Um, for whatever reason, the calculator wants it in feet. So there is a pressure conversion tab right here. This is, a, this is what I would use in order to convert my, my PSI to, to my feet. So pretty, pretty easy to do that. Um, there's also a, a discharge pressure, oh, um, so friction loss. Uh, so, uh, let me show you uh, something that is in the tail end of this, which is my definitions tab. It's sort of hidden, but it's very useful. Um, within the tail end of the greenhouse gas calculator, you'll find this definitions tab, which um, shows you an explanation as to you know what exactly we're looking for for discharge pressure uh, or friction loss. So. For example, friction loss, the default value is 10 feet for a well and 5 feet for a booster pump. Uh, so, you know, that's, that's the uh, default values for those. Um, pumping depth, of course, that's something you should know in your pump. Um, okay, back to my input number one. So, I'm going to put, we'll say it's a well and Oh, my discharge pressure. Anyway, you'll fill these out accordingly, converting to converting what that is. Um, within this, there's also, are you going, going to be installing a variable frequency drive? This does affect your overall greenhouse gas emissions. So if you are installing a, green, uh, a variable frequency drive, you'll click this as a drop-down menu. Uh, I'm putting a VFD on my booster pump, let's say, or my well pump. Uh, I already have a VFD, or I'm not installing a VFD. These things need to be filled out here. Um, now this is the water saving, the sweep tool that we filled out prior. Uh, I forgot what my savings was, but I think we were doing pretty good. 32.2. Um, so that's where I would put 32.2. I believe it rounds the whole number. Um, and then the uh, renewable energy capacity, I want you to keep in mind that this is in kilowatts, not in kilowatt hours. So if you are installing a, you know, 20 panel system that let's just say is, is 10 kilowatts. You know, I'm not quite sure, but um, you would put 10 kilowatts here. That's not the amount of energy that the solar panel system is going to be producing over the year. So we've seen people put in, you know, 10,000 in here. Well, we, they're not installing a, a one megawatt system. They're they're or 10 megawatt system. They're they're um, planning on saving. 10,000 kilowatts. This is an error that happens that uh, sometimes the technical reviewers are able to amend, but sometimes they're not. I would strongly encourage you to not make that mistake. Um, I want to make sure that's, that's clear. Uh, and then my new new fuel type. So in this scenario, I was saying I was going to be putting in solar. So that's where I, where I could put it here. But if I was, um, you know, originally I had an electric pump, uh, I can put in, um, uh, you know, electric, uh, electric pump as well. So there's going to be no change in the emission factor, but there will be a change because of the overall pump efficiency. Um, so that, yeah, there's no change. Uh, I didn't fill it out in its, in its totality, so there will be an error in, in the summary tab. But another thing to keep in mind, uh, there are five input tabs within this calculator. So if you have uh, a large operation that has multiple pumps or, or a small one that's using a well pump and then a booster pump, you'll need to put in for input to as well uh, that information uh, that, that's part of that. Um, if you have six pumps as part of the project, what you can do is do two calculators um, and you can simply just add the, uh, the um, savings together 
as what the projected savings is going to be um, once you get to the summary tab. So you see there's an error right there, in part because I didn't put how much money I would be requesting. Uh, but this is where I'm going to find that, that important information that I'm going to be putting into the application. Um, it's a, it's a pretty complicated tool. It looks a little intimidating, but uh, I think if you just take a moment and, and uh, look at it, um, it should be uh, fairly easy to, to figure out uh, how, how exactly it works. So. Okay, um, uh, the review and evaluation process. So as I stated earlier, there are multiple levels of review. There, there's that administrative review. We're looking at the completeness of the project as done internally by folks at CDFA. And then there's that technical review uh, done externally by people in the UC system, uh, various uh, high level PhD professors and et cetera that are really experts in the field. Um, so um, CDFA will select applications for funding based on the following. The, the score is provided by a technical reviewer, including the number of additional considerations. That was a socially disadvantaged community, uh, socially disadvantaged farmer pieces. Um, the level of water savings per acre. This is on a per acre basis again. Um, and then the level of greenhouse gas reductions per acre. Uh, so if you have these, these numbers, uh, the water savings and the greenhouse gas savings numbers, they're pretty competitive. That is a boost to the, the way the selection process for your for your application. Okay, uh, so this is the scoring criteria we've developed. Uh, this is new this round, uh, as opposed to how it was in the past. Uh, we are going at a, on a 50 point scale for the technical reviewers, uh, 12 point uh, for merit and feasibility uh, of the project, uh, 12 points for estimated water savings, uh, 12 points for estimated greenhouse gas savings. Now this is uh, based on the completeness of the calculator and, and uh, various other criteria that they're, that they're reviewing. Uh, the budget, they're, they're gonna be looking in the budget as a whole, uh, seeing, making sure that the components that you have listed in the design and the narratives are in fact incorporated in the budget and the numbers are correct uh, and there's nothing, nothing uh, off there. And then additional considerations. Uh, there are six additional considerations uh, they can help uh, boost your project, and I'll go into that. Uh, the additional considerations um, we have are, has your project been previously awarded? Um, so if you're a new applicant, you're automatically going to get one extra point. Uh, congratulations. Uh, are you pro do you have a provision of cost share? Uh, are you essentially putting skin in the game? Is this something that you're willing to um, participate in as well as the state? Um, are you going to be committed to doing irrigation training? Uh, irrigation training is a resource that we have. There, there are various resources that are, so we have some resources listed on the SWEEP webpage of optional irrigation training. Uh, this is to help inform the irrigator uh, as to some of the new equipment that they might be installing or um, additional um, you know, agronomic information that might be useful uh, in order to use these uh, systems effectively. Uh, it's an additional consideration. And uh, so the reduction of groundwater pumping in a critically overdrafted groundwater basin. This is uh, sort of just where your farm lies. Uh, there is a, a critically overdrafted groundwater basin map tool that's in integrated into the calculator or in into the application uh, in which you'll be able to find uh, information like that. Um, the implementation of soil management practices. Uh, again, these, these are also listed on the um, application uh, but there's compost application, cover cropping, um, and then um, a couple other uh, soil management practices that uh, can, if you're, you agree to sign up for as part of your farm, uh, will give you an additional consideration. And uh, this one is new. Uh, I'm a little excited to see what this, what this holds, but it's part of our, our new funding requirement, which is stormwater capture and the reuse, and also the, re the use of recycled water. So, uh, some folks might be fortunate to be next to a, a wastewater treatment plant that might provide uh, for, uh, recycled water. Um, and if they are able to tap into that purple pipe, is what they call it, um, 
then uh, that can be an added benefit, uh, but as well as using stormwater capture and, and the various reuse methodologies. Okay, uh, so this is how to apply. Uh, so we do have a brand new application platform. Uh, previously we've used the FAST system, but now we're using a system touched by WiseHive. Um, applicants can ex uh, access this application directly from the Sweep webpage and then you log in and create an account and submit through this portal. Uh, we, we think that this is going to be a, an improvement and make the application process easier for folks who are, are new to apply. Um, so uh, something I want to keep in mind though is when you're, when you're getting to this application stage, you do want to have an on hand, you know, your project design, the budget, the water calculator, the greenhouse gas calculator, the pumping test, and 12 months of energy record. That's going to be the more effective way to approach this application. Um, so you can open one, review it, see what kind of questions that you might need to, to gather additional information on. Um, but uh, I think having that information beforehand uh, will be helpful. Let me open it up for you. Okay, so I have already logged in, but uh, if you um, need to log in. Actually, let me show you that it is on the, well, actually, I think I did show you that on the web page there's an apply now or apply here button. Click that button, launches here. Uh, you'll make an account. Um, so within this, uh, I've already made a profile, but it'll prompt me to make a profile, you know, my name, my email address, uh, contact information, et cetera. I have active links in here, which is the uh, request for application, the frequently asked questions, so if I need to reference those. Uh, my profile, and then this is an application that I've created just simply for the purpose of showing the platform. Uh, it's not terribly thorough. Uh, I wouldn't. I would encourage you to, to be more detailed uh, than this. But this is this is just sort of sort of to show you how the platform works. So I am launching that. So this is my identification number. That's my project identification number. It's a really important number. I would write it on a sticky note, stick it on my forehead, make sure I keep that. Um, you know, for a long period of time, and I know that number. Um, again, it's reviewing that you need these certain pieces of information and the application, but let's go into the actual application itself. So, there's some active links, but it's going to be asking me for my agricultural operation, this applying for the sweep grant, my ID, my tax ID number, city, state, zip code, um, full name of primary contact person, their phone number, their email address. Uh, there's this uh, gender options and uh, U.S. Armed Forces. Um, disadvantaged uh, social disadvantaged group is defined below. That was uh, what we went went over uh, the ethnic and uh, racial and gender. Um, so have I received a project before? I, one thing I want to point out is these are um, responsive tabs. So I said no, but if I say yes, it will prompt me to uh, give you the application numbers that I've applied for previously. Uh, so that way um, we'll know uh, what, you're, what to reference. Um, project overview title. One thing that's interesting is I have it set up to name um, my project, the, the identification number, that 97 number that I uh, referenced before, and then a dash in the project title so it's easy to identify which project I'm looking at. Um, there's the grant request funds. Uh, this is where I would attach my budget worksheet. I'll try and go through this. Um, there's an active links to where I would find things like GPS coordinates or uh, the socially disadvantaged community link is right here. Um, Oh, one thing I would like to um, stress, go back to the project budget. Um, we do have a file naming convention, which we would greatly encourage folks to adhere to. Uh, that is using that identification number that we uh, had listed prior, uh, as well as uh, the name of the actual uh, document that you're attaching. So for this example, the budget worksheet I have you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's a seven digit number, uh, dash 2018 sweep budget worksheet. Uh, 2018 sweep budget worksheet is what the file is called. So you'll essentially just need to add 
the uh, identification number to the front of that when you save it. Uh, this would be appreciated if you can try and save things accordingly. Um, so there, there's, a, there's a lot to this application, but uh, don't be intimidated. Uh, you can go through and save it at the bottom. Um, I can save it as a draft. Uh, this project, this one is actually complete. Uh, you know. um, so here's something that's interesting. Oh, yeah, it's not complete. So I, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't expect to do this, but um, I had a field that it's required. It has a red asterisk on it, meaning that you have to fill it out, and I didn't fill anything out, so it won't let me save that. Um, but I've never received this sweet project before, so we'll go back. Save that. Okay, so I've completed my application, but I still need to submit it. So I go in here, I go down to the bottom, it's telling me, you know, select the green button to submit. I have 20 or 58 days remaining to submit this application. Um, let's say I feel good and I'm ready, so I submit it. And then, um, you know, something happens, I realize that ah, I missed this one important thing and I really wanted to include it in my project and I think I'll be more competitive if I do. I can actually recall it. So there's this is a new function that um, is part of the, the platform we have. I can go edit and yes, I want to reopen this page. So I'm recalling it back and now I can edit it. Uh, I can open it up. I can change my attachments. I can, I can do what I need to do uh, in order to, to see to it if that's, that's complete. I think that's going to be a really useful feature. Uh, I, I hope so, um, and uh, I look forward to, to seeing how this application pans out, or this platform pans out. It's been, it's been kind of exciting to work with. So, okay. Um, let me just make sure I'm not forgetting. Okay, so I submitted my application. I was happy with it. And uh, awardee requirements. So this is sort of a, just a preliminary information. If you are in fact selected to be an award, there are still requirements that you need to adhere to. Um, and there are conditional. Um, so there is what's called a pre-project consultation, which is conducted by a CDFA environmental scientist uh, to, convert, to confirm the project information. Uh, and as well as discuss uh, the implementation plan. So that's when someone like me might call you, uh, set up a time, and uh, go over your project to make sure really that uh, as I read it, uh, it is what you intended. That, you know, we're putting in this new pump or converting from flood to drip, uh, so on and so forth, and that it's clear I can make any amendments that might be required. Um, at this point, we're going to want, if you haven't provided it already, um, the assessor's map uh, with an aerial map of the impacted acreage to verify the site location. Uh, this you'll include in your application on the original, on the originally, but we might need some corrections. Um, Post uh, project verification, uh, this is when someone comes out and it's either a CDF environmental scientist like myself or uh, local RCD, uh, and we evaluate the completeness of the project. It is required uh, that we, you know, make sure the parts, the components that we're funding are actually installed in accordance to what was originally proposed. Um, so just do keep that in mind. There are additional considerations. Um, there is a post-project quantification, which is, again, con conducted by the CDFA environmental scientist or potentially a third-party uh, representative that evaluates uh, project outcomes. So uh, there's a chance we might request additional information post-project from you. This is um, sort of your post-project energy records, uh, if you have flow meter readouts, uh, solar generation information. Uh, I'm really not to be in, not something to be concerned about, but this is a way for us to review the tools that we have and to see the projections, that, the projections versus the reality of, of what's going on. Um, so please keep in mind that that is uh, something that you would uh, need to adhere to as part of receiving this $100,000 grant. Um, so, 
and another thing, you are expected to use and maintain the install system for a minimum of 10 years. 10 years is considered the life of a project. Um, so we would we would uh, project that you we maintain the, the drip system and uh, things things will be working accordingly. Ah, okay. So I have a, a video to show you. Sorry, it's black right now, but uh, um, this is a video of someone who has received a sweep grant in the past. Uh, they're down in Imperial Valley. Uh, he's converted from flood irrigation to subsurface drip in a wheat field, I believe. Um, it's, a, it's a really cool project. I just wanted to show you uh, sort of a highlight of you know, one of my more favorite projects that has come through the 600 and 630 plus projects we've had since the life of Sweep. Um, so with that, I will show you the video. <laughs> To become productive in, in California agriculture, you need to expand, you need to grow, you need to modernize. When my grandfather moved here, he started on an 80-acre uh, homestead that was given to him by the federal government. My father farmed about 500 acres, 800 acres, and now I'm farming about 1,500 acres. My primary production is forage crops, and then secondarily, I grow a lot of seed crops. Wheat is one of the lesser crops that I grow, but it's a good rotational crop, and uh, and I chose that wheat for this project because the project finished in December, and it was one of the only crops that I could plant in December, and uh, now we're going to harvest the first crop off of the subsurface drip uh, that was uh, provided with a sweet ground funding. Thanks for coming over. The sweep grant is another tool that we use in our toolbox. It allows us to do things that aren't profitable at this time. It allows us to, to use state-of-the-art technology and, um, and allows us to do it on a large farming scale so we can use that data and use what we learn onto other farms. I'm uh, on the board of directors for the California State Farm Bureau. I'm actually on the board for our local county farm bureau. So we spend uh, a week a year and we go back to Washington you know we're trying to feed the nation and if we don't tell our story nobody else is going to tell our story and if you get a family farm that goes back to Washington DC you can usually gain a lot of respect and a lot of influence <laughs> I've already had a field day out here. I brought other farmers in to look at this to, you know, and farmers are curious. In the last five, ten years, water is becoming more and more valuable in the state. If we can apply less water, we can use that other water in other fields or in other areas of California. About the top six inches never gets never gets wet, stays powdery dry. But as we start getting down a little bit lower, we're about six inches there. Start picking up moisture. So there's various parts of this um, of this weather station, and we've got the solar panel that's powering it. You've got a backup battery system and, and, and data logger that's recording the, the information. And then you've got all these instruments here that are, they're actually measuring how much evaporation is going on in the crop. And they're, they're actually telling me how much water the crop is actually using at any 24 hour, 12 hour period. When we're putting optimum amount of water on it at the, at the time, we're getting a water savings plus we're producing more crop with less water. Without a doubt, the, this new technology is going to increase yield. When you look out across this wheat field, even before it's harvested, it's very uniform. It's very same height. The grain is the same size. They're plump. They're filled up. So I anticipate a, probably a 25% yield increase. And looking at it, it appears to be a very um, 
good yielding crop. And then quality of it too. We, we grow a specialized wheat here. This is called a desert durum. It's only grown in Imperial and Yuma counties. And this wheat demands a very premium price. And we have to meet these high premium protein levels to get those prices. And with this drip technology, we're able to put fertilizer on at optimum rates and at the optimum time. And we, we probably will have very high, um, high testing wheat too. On average, in agriculture, production it doubles every 20 years. And that's what keeps us ahead of foreign areas like Argentina, Australia, Brazil. And they're still behind us in our technology. Between myself and my son and my son's kids now that are going to be fifth generation taking this farm over in another 30, 40 years, um, it's, still, it's still something that we love to do. We're doing it because uh, it's, we make money at it and we enjoy it. And it's a heritage that we're trying to, trying to keep up, um, trying not to let my grandfather down what he started. Yeah, um, so Ronnie's a really cool guy. Um, we actually had a farm tour down there um, a couple months back where the secretary visited, and he was very accommodating to show individuals about the farm. And he's done a couple of other um, farm tours with people in the local area. Um, so I, I do really like that project. I think it really, you know, tells the generational information and and really is a it's one of the more premium sweet projects we've we've received. Just to say, you don't necessarily have to convert from flood um, to subsurface drip in your wheat field in order to receive a sweep grant. You've seen other types of projects that receive seed funding as well. It's just a highlight that I like. Uh, there are additional videos of other projects that are located on the sweep webpage. Uh, if you're curious about ones that maybe are more local in, in your area, I know Imperial's uh, different than, uh, than you know, Sacramento Valley. Okay, with that, uh, I will take uh, any, any kind of uh, questions that uh, anyone in the room might have first, and then I'll go to the webinar and uh, see if there's any questions there that I might be able to um, assist with. Um, sure, uh, let me get you the microphone. Thank you. Do the additional considerations need to be on the same APNs that you're applying for for the sweet money? Uh, yes. Yeah. If you're looking at applying compost, it would need to be on the same uh, same project, the same APN. Yeah. Uh, any additional questions in the room? David. When you're going through the uh, application, do you have to insert information into every field to save a draft? I mentioned that it wouldn't save unless you had all the asterisk fields. I think it's, that's a good question. And no, you can save a draft. I think what the issue was with that one is that I had already completed it and submitted it. So normally there are two boxes at the bottom, one that says save as draft and one that says save. So yes, you can complete a half completed app or you can save a half completed application as a draft. Thank you. I actually have one more question. <laughs> um, you mentioned that exclusions included NRCS and equip funds. Does that mean they can't be included in match? Okay, um, sorry, needed to check. Um, and no, you can use uh, NRCS equip funding as a matching component. Uh, it just can't be funding the same piece of equipment. So if you receive funding from NRCS for a soil moisture gauge, that needs to be uh, wholly in the matching fund category. Thank you. It should also be included in, in the budget, just, just to make sure that's clear, that uh, you would include the funds you've received from elsewhere as well. 
Okay, uh, I don't see any more questions in the room, so we will go uh, and look to see what has been asked on questions. Okay, bear with me, I have to start publishing now. Idea, Carolyn, as to how to make this window big enough to read. Um, sorry, <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure how I do that right here. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Reading them in. Oh no, I can do it. Um, um, how long would would be a oh sorry the questions are coming in. Um, let's start from the bottom. Are you able to receive the participants list for networking or collaboration? Um, you might need to further clarify that question. I'm not quite sure I understand uh, what the what the question is. Um, do pump, pump tests have to be done within the past two years? Uh, yes, the pump tests need to be done within the last two years, uh, or or more frequently, or more. The more up to date your pump test is going to be, the better it is going to be because pumps degrade over time, and you'll have the most accurate piece of information. But they need to be within at least two years. Can you reiterate what you stand, what you stated about the equips as matching, please? Okay, so. Um, Within that uh, equip fund, so if if you receive an equip grant uh, and you want to apply it to the same assessor's parcel number, um, you're going to be putting that in the matching funds category of your application, and we are not going to fund anything that the equip grant is already funding. So if you get if you receive funding from equip for soil moisture or irrigation water management system, uh, you'll be putting that in the matching funds category. Uh, and there won't be any uh, sort of overlap uh, for us uh, paying for any of that. Um, oh, can you explain the water savings tool, uh, irrigation water management plan level system? Okay, uh, sure. The, the uh, irrigation water management system uh, consists of three basic components. It's a flow meter, an ET station, and a soil moisture sensor. So uh, if you have an irrigation water management level three, that would, that would have all of those components in it. Uh, if you have a soil moisture or a irrigation water management system level two, that can consist of two of those components, uh, such as the flow meter and the uh, ET station, for example. Uh, to have a level one, uh, you, would, you certainly need to have a flow meter as part of the project. Um, so that would be an, uh, an example of an irrigation water management increase to level one. Now, again, these are increases from what your baseline was before. So if you previously have a flow meter and you're only proposing uh, installing a soil moisture sensor, for example, that is an irrigation water management system level two, but that is an increase of only one level because you previously had that that uh, flow meter, and so. Uh, within the quantification methodology, you would input an increase by one level. Um, how long would a would be a qualified typical project within SWEEP program? Um, I think you're asking me how long it usually takes to install a SWEEP project. Uh, that, that variates um, depending on. We have examples of sweet projects that are simply installing irrigation water management systems that are requesting, you know, six thousand dollars from us. Those can be installed in a number of days or weeks. Uh, and some cases we have folks that are installing large solar systems, uh, which can take uh, sometimes the entire duration of the grant period. Um, let me make sure. I'm So if an APN was selected and approved for a previous sweep project, 
but the project did not take place and was not funded, would those APNs be excluded from this year's award? So no, uh, you, you haven't received a um, sweep uh, grant before, uh, so no, your project, would, your project is still available to receive funding on that, that APN um, because you have not had a sweep grant before. Um, So the list of the participants is a form consistent or consists of the people who participate in a workshop or a webinar, pretty standard and open grants or BAAs. I believe that's just a statement. Um, oh, if I'm if I have leased land, am I eligible to apply? Uh, yes, you are. Um, we assume that you're making an agreement with your landlord um, about what you're anticipating to do. Uh, but that is outside the sweep grant, and we will still receive, um, we will still award sweep funds for leased land. Um, okay. um, sorry, I'm just jumping around a bit. Make sure I get in this thing. Um, okay, uh, Nancy Comstock has a question. Um, so, um, Pump Efficiency Testing Services, PETS, we are available for test pumps in the area for electric pumps. Um, so, uh, she's wondering if they still require um, completed tests for a diesel pump, and yes, you still would need um, a completed test for a diesel pump. Uh, sounds like it's a laborious process, um, but I, I can tell you that it, it is something that is still required. Um, uh, we do need pump efficient, overall pump efficiency tests in order for the pump the system to work. And I would encourage any farmer who is interested in applying for SWEEP to, um, to, to receive that uh, despite the, uh, the labor that might be affiliated with that. Um, Oh, okay, so would two separate APNs disqualify eligibility? Uh, this individual has two blocks that are across the street from each other uh, and that they have their own pumps. Um, and he's wondering if you need to apply uh, separately for each project. And no, uh, you can incorporate both of those into a single project. Uh, we have uh, plenty of examples in SWEEP that have received awards for multiple pumps in fields that are not necessarily uh, touching each other, but they're generally speaking in, this, in similar locations. Uh, we know that, that uh, farms sometimes spread uh, and not every field is, is touching. Um, so yes, you can apply uh, for both of those fields uh, on the same grant. Uh, you would conduct the, uh, the same, uh, you would use the greenhouse gas quantification for both of those pumps um, using the energy records for, for each of the individual pumps. So you should have a, um, probably a drop down line or a smart meter and you can um, get the information for each of those pumps separately uh, and attach those documents accordingly. Um, okay. Um, okay. Um, I will wait for any additional questions that uh, might come. Um, Uh, we have a question in the room. Hello. Uh, earlier when you were discussing the the um, 
the water tool and the greenhouse gas calculation tool. Um, I believe you alluded to one item from one tool that was needed to be referenced in the other tool. So do you advise that people start with the water tool and then complete that before proceeding with the greenhouse gas calculator or is there kind of an order of operations? Yeah, uh, I think you, you figured this out. Um, yeah, you definitely want to complete the water savings tool first. It's required because there's the input, the water savings percentage that you would put in to the greenhouse gas tool. And that's a method that um, essentially results in the reduction of greenhouse gases because if you're, say, saving 10% water on your projections and you do nothing to your pump, you're still pumping 10% less to the total blood acreage, so you still save 10% uh, collective greenhouse gas potential. Um, so yes, the order of operations would be the water water test or the uh, water calculator first, uh, followed by the the uh, greenhouse gas tool. Okay, we have a question online, which is, do we require utility records for January 2017 to December 2017, uh, or the 2018 year, as seeing as we're going into 2018? Uh, the 2018 year would be most accurate representative. Um, right, okay, so um, I was just referencing my management, but. Uh, Yes, we have decided that uh, you can submit either. Um, so 2017 is sufficient. Uh, 2018 uh, will also work and might be more representative, especially if you're growing uh, some sort of tree crops that are developing. 2018 would probably be more appropriate, uh, but, but uh, please uh, supply the 12, 12 months of energy records uh, that you can. Question in the room. Uh, for the 12 months, does it have to be an exact calendar year or could it be like a July to July 12 month period? So, uh, yeah, my feeling is if you're within 2017 and 18 water year, that makes sense. Me. Um, so, is that kind of right? I'm liking at making a decision right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think what you're saying is that it can be from. The well, since we're allowing either 2017 or 18, if you have 2017 July to July 2018, that that represents a water year, so that makes sense. So if someone has already installed solar, but they're installing rainwater catchment, as an example, to reduce pumping from their well, there would still be a greenhouse gas savings, correct? Um, sort of a, a complicated question, actually. Um, so if your uh, energy production on your solar system is beyond that of the, or at or beyond the requirements of your total your pumping energy that's required, you wouldn't be saving any greenhouse gases from rain uh, from rainwater catchment uh, because you're already essentially producing zero on your site. Uh, if you are uh, doing less than that, um, you can potentially be saving uh, greenhouse gases uh, from your site by doing um, reduction of pumping through the to the uh, um, rainwater catchment. Uh, I, it is worth uh, noting that the rainwater catchment is not something that's quantified within the water savings assessment tool. Uh, so if you were looking at doing a project with just this route, um, you would need to uh, write an ample justification as to the projected water savings and um, greenhouse gas savings that would be affiliated with that. And the technical reviewer will review these, these proposed ideas 
uh, to see if they can uh, quantify this accordingly. Um, but it, it's a, sort of a complicated um, pro uh, question that you have. One more. Okay, um, so uh, we have a, an individual who is uh, purchasing land, and uh, they are—they only have partial energy uh, records from May 2018 to December. Are they still eligible to apply? Uh, so the answer to that right now is uh, you need to obtain 12 months of energy records in order to apply. Now, if you can get in contact with the previous landowner and they can supply that information, uh, that might be sufficient for the 12 months that are necessary. Uh, but with, based on the information that you have, we do need 12 months of uh, baseline data for the, the utility uh, records in order to be eligible to apply. Okay, um, I'll wait uh, five minutes to see if any additional questions come in. Um, and we'll just make sure that no one's, no one's in the process of typing anything. I do want to uh, reiterate to the folks in the room, there's a sign-in sheet. Uh, I did sneak past it a minute ago. I noticed that uh, it's, uh, there are more people in the room that have signed it. So I would please, uh, please sign in on your, on your way out. Um, uh, make sure we have an accurate log of, of the attendance that are, of folks that are here. One sec, one, one sec. Uh, I do want to uh, just uh, elaborate that the new landowner who, who just asked me this question, um, someone had refreshed my memory. We are anticipating a second round of sweep, uh, and so if, if there is difficulty in obtaining that record, by the time we are soliciting the second round, it sounds like uh, you should be able to have that uh, 12 months of energy records um, to be able to apply for round two. Um, just something to keep in mind uh, that there will be an ongoing potential for funding. Um, so you won't be out of luck if you won't be able to achieve that at this time. All right. Thank you. So you cannot have started your projects before this funding, correct? Yes. Uh, you, you cannot have started your project before the funding. That is correct. Um, the project needs to be implemented during that funding cycle. Um, so if, if you, uh, just as an example, installed your soil moisture gauges before we executed a grant agreement and before the funding cycle, then you would be in violation of the terms of your uh, agreement and subjugated to potential cancellation. If you plan on doing something like that, could you just put that in as part of your cost share component, knowing that you're going to pre-purchase that? So it's really not part of your funding then? Oh, so you're planning on, uh, are, you, are you still planning on starting this beforehand? Because the, the budget is, is around things that start after September. So. It, what you're going to be quantifying is the base before that September time frame. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, so we have a question. Any idea when round two will be opened? Um, we are anticipating uh, opening round two after awards have been initiated for this round. We do not have a uh, set date at this time. But that would be it just it would be several months from now um, after May, so you should be in the clear um, based on your your question prior. We'll, we'll give it two more minutes until um, see if there's anyone in the process of typing since we just received a question. Uh, and then I'll go ahead and close the, the webinar. Uh, just so folks know, we are doing a webinar in Fresno uh, tomorrow uh, from 9 to 11 in the Farm Bureau. And then on the, the, the 15th, we'll be doing one in Doris City Hall. Uh, so there will be a multiple opportunities to see these workshops. Uh, again, we'll be posting this, this workshop online uh, for reference for folks uh, in the future as well. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and close this uh, webinar. Uh, I want to thank everybody who's uh, come today and to, uh, who's interested in applying to the SWEET program. Um, we look forward to receiving uh, multiple applications this cycle. And um, yeah, thank you for attending. Yeah, you folks on the webinar as well.